Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a very, very nice few days here in Eastern Southland and we've got a pair load of work done. But, yeah, haven't had a lot of time for recording, so we're going to play a bit of catch up now. So anyway, we're just doing a bit of spreading out. We've got all the ewes spread out over the farm, but like, for example, these ones here. So here's a wee mob of, I think there's 46 there. And there should be 55 just up, uh, where are we? Up there somewhere. Up there. I can't see them, you guys can. And then over the fence there's a few more. Uh, so we're just getting them into their paddocks to lock them in where they're supposed to be. And that will just help us with grass growth and mob size for lambing and everything. Um, we've already got a few of the neighbours' hoggets. There's one just there and there's one just there that have come through. So we'll get them caught in a wee while and uh, get them back. But yeah, things are looking really, really good. And I've even got like 16 hectares of ground ripped up. So that is a big bonus because I was getting a bit worried that we weren't going to get that done before lambing and that sort of needs to happen as soon as it can. So there they go into their new home. Just notice that yellow flower there. That's gorse and I need to do something about that. But anyway, that's where they're going to be for the next 90 days-ish, roughly, hopefully. And there's another wee few through, so we've got, I'm going to go count them because I'm not sure that's quite right, but should be 55 there, 55 there, and then 50 over there. But I might have changed my numbers around a wee bit, and I can't quite remember, so we'll just double check. Everything's got plenty of room, but we might have, yeah, got stuff back and forth a wee bit just according to where feed was, because uh, sort of do your set stocking plan a couple of weeks out, and then, yeah... Some paddocks grow better than others, and it's the feed on the ground as much as the area that is really important. So we'll just we'll find out. There we go. There's another wee mob hiding there. So there's them and them. So I think we'll be right, but we'll just have a quick count. It's about 50, near enough. Going for a drive around the early lambers to make sure they're all getting on alright. Hey still. Still. But she's too worried about chasing sheep. Anyway, they're all doing the job. Of course, we're a young set of twins right there somewhere. Probably born yesterday or overnight. Now, here's a really delicate situation. You stay there. The squirrel's got cast overnight and she's lambed. Got two nice wee lambs there. Unfortunately, one dead behind her. Oh, girly, up you get, up you get. Are you gonna get up, girl? You okay, girl? Oh, don't go down there. Don't go down there, you've got lamps. Right, we need to get out of here quick. We lammies everywhere. Just heaps, which is cool because we're about halfway through today. So, yeah, a little over. Heaps in the land. Now would you look at that guys, that's that ewe that was cast. I stood her up, she went down there, I drove down there below her. She started walking this way, we drove away and left her, and she's come back to her lambs. We've been unfortunate that one's died, but uh, presuming what's happened there is she's had the first two, she's laid down to have the third one and got cast in the middle of the night. And yeah, birthing, doesn't matter what species you are, is a very risky process and unfortunately we've lost one of the four so we've got the ewe and we've got two lambs alive um probably still a better outcome than what had happened in the wild if that had happened because i wouldn't have come here to stand her up but we're going to get out of here fast because she doesn't like me being here and we're going to go check some more we lambies everywhere you know that feeling when you find a mob of sheep where they're not supposed to be yeah there they go. That gate was the culprit. Check out all that clover, would you? <clears throat> so this right here, this is ryegrass. This is the predominant source of energy and feed for our sheep. But this little stuff here, this is magic stuff. So this is white clover. It's a perennial, it is one of the hardest plants we had to kill. If it was a weed, we'd be stuffed. 
but this is a really high source of protein really good quality lamb feed and it gives us that nitrogen it sequesters nitrogen whatever you want to call it into the soil for the ryegrass to grow so ryegrass will get some of its nitrogen from the air I'm guessing I don't know particularly but that clover is putting heaps of nitrogen in the soil right beside the roots of the ryegrass the ryegrass gets that the ryegrass grows and that is sort of what New Zealand agriculture has been doing for the best part of 150 years so yeah pretty cool to see it there at this time of year there's that gate shut and it is raining so we just shot back and got a jacket and a hat because uh, it's killed off quite a bit anyway we've got 94 sheep there we need 140 in this paddock there is this paddock right here and the next two up have about 340 in them so we're just going to destock this one and the second one over the middle one's got a heap of feed on it so make sure we've got about 130 140 in here because there's quite a bit of feed here and yeah this one here will probably only have about 80 in that and the one over the far side which you'll see shortly we will probably we're going to put 110 in there we might just make it 90 or 100 but it hasn't got quite as much feed on it it was grazed in early august so yeah make it all balance out so between them and them there's about 90 sheep in this paddock now and as you can see there's not quite as much feed around up here but uh still enough to keep them going those girls are a bit eager to get through this gateway which i can't understand because they've got oodles of feed in there and i mean this paddock has got quite a bit of feed but it's just really dull because it was grazed so it just wasn't grazed very heavily try to get 30 through this gateway Come on girls. I'm gonna say that's enough. Near enough. So there we go, let's just keep them going for a wee while. 
So if you're coming up here again for a few days. So as you can see here, we've got quite a bit of Bailey's left over up here at the kettle. And uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to get rid of that open tube before they come off the pad, but there's a whole tube left there. Which is good, because we don't know what the coming season is going to bring. I'm going to get a fence up around it the next few days so that the sheep don't pick any more holes in it. And there's a few wee holes there a little tap up. Uh, they're not big ones, but probably a few bales in there. I've got the 74 bales in the tube. There might be three or four that aren't feed out next year, but the rest of them should be good. Um, we're getting bailed from down the road the sheep because there's another open tube down there and I really need it gone. So hopefully by the end of lambing, or sorry, by the start of lambing, we'll have another 16 bales, sorry, 12 bales gone out of that tube and that should only leave about 15 down there. So uh, yeah, by the 20th of September maybe, should all be gone and then there's about 20 bales in that open tube. We'll see how we go, whether we get rid of it all or not. Might be a struggle. Cattle would normally come off about the third or fourth of what's over. They go through six bales a day, but we'll just see what happens. There goes 60 Romney singles running onto the bank. It's got this big bank. Does a very nearly full circle. Goes the whole way around and come back, comes back to about 200 metres in a straight line from that point up there on the other side. It's about 10 hectares. So, uh, yeah, they're pretty lightly stocked on there. They'll be pretty happy there for a wee while. We do intentionally put the mixed age single ewes on that bank because they don't tend to have lambing difficulties. If something goes wrong on that bank, it's a big, big pain trying to sort it out. We've got to somehow get the ewe to somewhere that we can get her off and uh, sort the problem out. They're the least likely to cause a problem. So, and once they've had their lambs, it's pretty easy on a single mum to, to be a good mum. So yeah, the other side of that is that uh, feed quality in there is probably a bit lower. So if you put twins in there, the ewe's not going to milk quite as well, and the lambs won't grow as well. But it's 10 hectares of land, we make use of it, and yeah, it means that we can stock these other paddocks a wee bit lower. There goes the next lot of singles, which are going to that paddock over there. And then, just up there, there's a whole lot more. You just can't quite see them because they're hiding behind the hill. The turnouts are looking pretty good. These are the twin turnouts. Sarah's going to be landing these. I'm just shooting through them to do a wee job. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with how they've come through winter actually. And heaps of feed. It's a wee bit rough because, uh, sorry, I'm zoomed in there. Let's try that. It's a wee bit rough because we didn't have those triple U's in here grazing it for like three weeks. But plenty of feed. Quality will pick up. We're going to head up to that paddock and take about 75 out of there now. So, singles, ewes that are only going to have one lamb. All of our terminal singles, these are the ewes that have behaved badly in the past, are in this paddock. And some of the twins. Now, we've got two tooth singles in here, all two tooth singles. Um, but there's like 190 in that paddock, and that's about 90 too many, 80 too many. Um, got this fence here, brand new fence, awesome to have it up. Michael's pet project doing all the, we put the posts and he does the rest of it. He's just under the pump a wee bit, so gates aren't going to get swung for a few days. Couldn't care less, that's fine. But I'm going to take 80 of these and put them into here because they need to lamb in this paddock. That paddock has got okay cover on it. This one's looking pretty grunty here to be fair. So, we don't want to leave them in there and have them deck that paddock out so the ones that are left in there have no feed and then the ones that come in here have too much which, no such thing as too much really but it's just about making sure the ewes that are left in that paddock have enough feed to be able to milk properly and rear those lambs they're only singles but we do have a bit of a challenge here on this farm that uh, we probably do our singles a little bit hard and we're missing an opportunity there for lambs at weaning getting some more lambs away off mum as we wean, so trying to work on that a little bit. So we're just going to drive past and count out hopefully roughly 80. Hopefully they'll head back behind us. A nice wee string. Come on girls. These ones are a wee bit jumpier because they've got a lot less wool on them and they're young and they've never lambed before. This might not work quite so well. We'll 
Counting this lot through the gate and see what's there. Steel set. Oh, they behave so much better with the dog behind them. Very windy here today. Steel set. Lemmy there, be good for the freezer next year. About 85 there, that'll do. Just remember there's a couple of light ones in there. We had a hell of a tough spring and summer. Uh, summer and autumn, sorry. There are still some lingering effects of that, so yeah, handful of lot of sheep around, but all in all they've come through pretty well. Check out that for a few guys. Set stocking is done. Apart from the wee hoggets on the crop down there, but they don't get set stocked, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. So, anyway, that's set stocking done for the year. Just that one paddock we're waiting on the gates to go up in. Uh, once those gates are up, we'll split those sheep evenly. Should be able to chase the turtles out of the woolly ewes, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so last job for the day drive around everything. Sarah's going around her side. Uh, late lambers up there, early lambers, sorry, particularly. We'll do a th pretty thorough check of them. But basically every afternoon now, until we start lambing, we go around the whole farm checking for casts, anything else that might be wrong. Once they start lambing, we'll go twice a day. We probably don't need to, but the woolly ewe thing is probably the biggest issue, cast shape. Once they actually start lambing, if they get cast, if they get cast while they're lambing, as you saw happen this morning, it can be a bit ugly. So we want to avoid that. Um, yeah, so we're going to look at these earlies, and then yeah, there's something else I want to talk to you about. Alright well, guys, we're going to make an executive decision and check these cows from right here, because uh, everything's looking pretty happy, and it's a windy day, it's currently quite warm, lambs are all sitting down in little groups, and with the amount of grass we've got here, sorry I can't see what's going on on the screen, we... Can, so we sort of struggle to see them driving around. You think there might be a dead one, so you go to pick it up. Long story short, what you wind up doing is upsetting the whole paddock and making a big mess, and it would have been better if you didn't drive in there in the first place. So we're not going in that paddock. Unless, as I get a little bit further down this ridge, I see a cast one in there, I might drop the trailer off and sneak in and try and do something. But yeah, they all look pretty happy to me. Can't see everyone, obviously, but a bit of a risk assessment sort of thing, what do you call it? Um, yeah, so get that out of wind and then we'll talk a little bit about winter grazing. So we were just sitting up on top of that ridge there, and we were looking out over this paddock. Let's count all the ewes here that have got newborn lambs. There's one there, one there, one right there. Come along here, there's that one up there that we saw this morning. There's another one just in front of her that's got newborn lambs. See, so yeah, we don't want to upset that. Here's while we're going around them. Could be, uh, $500 worth right there. Good girl, good girl. There you go. Right, I found an nice spot out of the wind to talk about this. So, just over there, where are we? Are my hoggets on their winter grazing? Now, that winter grazing this year has been a massive saving grace because without it, we would not have had the feed to feed our stock this winter. 
the crops in the drought did amazingly well way better than we could have expected and uh, yeah yes autumn and winter have been very kind but we went into winter with no grass well we went into May with no grass and if you keep on top of that grass it doesn't grow it's only because we had the crops the way we did that we had the ability to grow uh, to feed our stock anyway we've got these certified farm plants the last sort of three or four years we've had a lot of talk about winter grazing and issues from it and we've all upped our game but I don't think we've upped our game much and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean we were pretty near the top of it anyway when it all started yes there was a few that needed to really pick things up and for the most part that's happened anyway we're in a bit of an issue at the moment where the vast majority of farmers in Southland that grow winter crop be it for sheep for cattle for deer doesn't matter are facing having to get resource consent. Now, no one knows for sure what the cost of that is. For a big farmer, it will probably work out cheaper per hectare and they will have to because of the area they're doing anyway. But for the likes of us, we could be looking at 10 to $15,000. We don't know. And yes, we could do that for 10 years, as in a 10 year consent, but that would cost more. And we're running out of time. Well, no, we're out of time. We were supposed to have a certified farm plan, which I don't know what was, or fresh water plan it might have been, which we still don't know what is, and supposedly it's going to be coming out in November. We're planting crops in November. We've got to get this plan filled in. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know what that involves. We've then got to get it certified, signed off. We've got to pay a fee to do that before we know whether we can plant our crops. Now, when these regulations were first proposed, they were ridiculous. They were telling us how deep your stock could fall, could sink into the soil. Five centimetres, that much. Yeah, with sheep, I'll grant that's very seldom does that happen. Cattle? No. Basically meant no cattle could be grazed in south and on crop. Um, that's a major, major issue. There were ones, oh, there was all sorts. I've done some videos on them. If you go back a couple of winters and have a look, um, we got into quite a bit of detail about a few of the rules. Anyway, 85, 90% of that has been thrown out. The two that remain are slope and area. So I think if you're more than 15% of your farm or 50 hectares, whichever is less, then you don't need consent or a certified farm plan. 10 degree slope though, that's a big issue. So if we have a look around here, this little slope in this grass paddock is about 10 degrees. All that cropped area there is fine, there's a bit around the corner you can see that's not. See this bit here? This is like 13 degrees. So that's out. Yeah, that, that's all out. That's all out. Obviously this stuff here would never touch, that's just ridiculous. But this paddock here in front of us, we did last year, has an average slope of about 14 degrees. That one over there is more like 17. So that's a lot of area. Whoa, look at that sky. That's pretty cool that we can't crop. Now, this is all neither here nor there right now. The problem we've got is that the certified farm plans are not ready. We're told they're going to be here in November. We'll see what they look like in November. Um, we needed them in June. We needed them in June so we could get our heads around them. We could get things done properly. And Ministry for the Environment, a government agency, have failed us. Absolutely failed us. Now, I don't want to get political on this channel, but right here and now we have to. This Labour government have hated farmers, particularly one man, David Parker, possibly James Shaw as well. He's always hated farmers, but we won't go there. But this is all on David Parker and his ministry. Um, <laughs> they need to put it off for a year. Simple as that. We've already gotten to put it off for a year because they weren't ready last year. They're not ready this year. Now, they all keep talking about when we're going to start grazing. And that's all very good and well. Yes, we need to know whether we can graze it or not. We need to know whether we can plant it or not. Because if we can't graze it, there's no point planting it. We've got a lot of paddocks. About 80% of our paddocks. That would have huge areas left out if this isn't resolved. Um, <laughs> yeah. It means we've got less effective area on the farm. We can't graze that. Because a break fence, let's be honest. You got a crop there that's worth tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, you're not going to trust three wires and a bit of power to keep stock out of that. It doesn't work. Um, 
permanent fencing is not a solution we want to do. It's really expensive. But once again, we're getting into semantics here. This is neither here nor there. They have not held up their end of the bargain. They have not got these plans ready. They have not got the certifiers ready. We need this a good five months before we plant the crops. They have to put it off for a year. And why aren't they? Because in October next year there's going to be an election. Here's a nice wee shot for you. We have upped our game. Previously, we would have put the fence around the edge here. Now there's actually no open waterway in there. That's all tiled, it's all enclosed. And we would have grazed towards it, or along it maybe. Um, this is just our way of doing it. This is just what we've found works on our farm. We do this little strip. You can see it's been done on the other side too. So we grazed that side of it first. And then the last break we grazed, we did this little bit here. Um, the hoggets have got about four breaks on there, which should be about 16 days. They've got two or three days left where they are. But that is case in point of farmers doing the right thing. So what's the problem? You guys, not you guys, the government, have not held up their end of the bargain. Why can they not just put this off for a year? Well, like I just said, because there's an election between now and then. But there's no shame in admitting you didn't get it done in time. We want this stuff done right. If it takes another year to do it, hey, we're happy with that. We want this to be done properly. We want this to help everybody out. We just need to know what we're working with. Certified farm plan would have us fine to do what we want to do next year. Well, I'm pretty sure it would. It gives us the option to, uh, basically what we do is we put up our mitigation processes, crop buffer strip, uh, whatever else we're doing, and a certifier comes along and says, yep, that'll do. No, that's not quite enough. We need you to do some more. Cool, awesome. What have we got to do? Consent, absolute, just no way. We can't do that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to end the video with a wee clip I took the other day of some lambs playing on a bank in the sun. Hope you really enjoyed that one, and we will see you next time.